All right, so welcome back everyone. So today's skinning video, um, we're gonna be skinning this beautiful fox here. This is a nice, real pale colored red fox. Um, now obviously with low fur prices and, and just, uh, you know, kind of unique critters in, in general, uh, a lot of people want to, to save the pelt and use it for a wall hanger or just to show off, right? So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, this we're gonna go ahead and skin this fox out and we're gonna do them up like I would a traditional wall hanger to be tanned um, you know very minimal differences uh, as opposed to selling it through the trade the biggest thing that uh, I find people want and that we're gonna do on this particular animal is we're going to leave all four feet on it and uh, then we're gonna split the ears and everything make sure it's it's good to go um, you know from this state into a home tanning uh, or even a commercial tanning uh, situation here all right so with that being said guys let me set you up and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started um, obviously I've got this clamp system here uh, and it's it, it helps me out um, for a couple of reasons, it keeps that animal right there at, a, at the eye level for me, as well as it kind of keeps it at stationary for you guys as well. Um, uh, we will be using a gambrel, you know, to raise and lower it. So if you guys are doing this at home, uh, you can always just, just, you know, use a rope or something else to keep them at this position. Um, anyway, with that being said, let's get set up here and we'll get started skinning this critter. All right. So I've got you guys set up here. I'm gonna keep my face out of the camera here, give you guys a little bit closer view here of what's going on. Hopefully you guys will have a, a pretty good view of what we're doing here. So very simple tools for this. If you're brand new or if you just wanna do a couple of them, um, you just need, need a knife. I've got a couple different varieties of these knives here, um, but just a small small knife will do, do this. Um, uh, you know, and then we just got just a dog brush here. We're just gonna start off with here and uh, And go ahead and brush this critter out. We want to make sure we get all the burrs and mats and everything out of them uh, Big mud clods and things of that nature. All right, so there he's all nice and brushed out So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna skin it very similar to a traditional uh, Case skin for the fur trade, right? So I'm gonna come in right here but I'm gonna come in right at the back of the D-pad this time here, and I'm going to make that initial cut right there. You can see right up the D-pad, and that just opens that up. Now, we're not going to, uh, like I said, we're gonna keep the feet on this, on this fox, so we're just gonna work all the way up the leg this time. Uh, like I said, you can see we're starting right at the base of the D-pad there. We're just gonna go ahead work all the way right up the leg. Now once we get to the, the joint here, now we're going to kind of draw us a line from the vent um, to that joint. And we're gonna shoot for, shoot for that nice straight line. Uh, the fox are pretty thin skinned, so just kind of take your time with this fox. Uh, other critters not so much, but just come right there to the vent. You can see we've opened that up very nicely. Okay, now what we wanna do is, because we're going to keep the feet on it, it's easier for me to hook the feet up high here on my clamp and work them down, but we still wanna be able to hang this guy on our gambrel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and you can see I'm just gonna kinda of work uh, the skin around little bit of knife work and then a lot of it's just going to be using our hands uh, just to kind of knead around and what I'm trying to get at is I'm trying to get to a point where this tendon here we can get above that slightly and cut the the back foot off and then at a later time then we can go at it and remove the toes but it makes it a lot easier if you can go ahead and and keep that tendon on the on the carcass that way you've got something for your gambrel to be able to uh to hang on to right so you can see i'm just using just a few cuts of my knife here uh just to kind of work it around okay now obviously like i said we're gonna have to we're gonna have to cut something because we gotta we want to save the foot right this is that joint so we don't want to cut that tendon we want to be able to hang them so what i want to do is i'm gonna come up here um, I'm just gonna take just a, these are just cheap pruning loppers here and I'm gonna cut, you know, about a half inch above that joint 
uh, and just come here there we go it's very simple you can like I said if you're not doing just a fox you can do this on all critters uh, just cut right through that bone all right so that frees everything up so where we can case skin it and then now we can come back at a later time and work those toes out and skin that foot rather than it being all dangly here uh, you know and us kind of fighting it right so now with the with the foot free we can just kind of commence to uh, just work in this hide down you can see I'm just taking my thumb and and just kind of kneading that hide in um, obviously these fox they have really thin skin uh, you know different critters are different uh, you know pull a little bit different but nothing much to it here all right now then now we're gonna just flip them over and I'll just attach them into my clamp system here and then we're just gonna make the exact same cut do the exact same thing right above the d-pad there and then all the way up to the vent if you guys are interested this little triangle knife uh, that I'm using this is what I call a first cut knife uh, I will leave a link in the description below where you guys can pick one up they're pretty handy uh, for situations like this okay so there you see this knife is actually called a pelter knife if you want to look it up um, so there you go you can see we've made that cut just kind of working that that skin around like I said we come to some of the the little tougher spots here we're gonna want to just use our knife but for the vast majority of this um, you know you're a lot less apt to make mistakes if you pull the hide versus uh, versus use your knife to cut the hide so same thing there we're just gonna work that around same thing we're gonna pull that right down to uh, to the foot there now you might be thinking to yourself well we're leaving the feet on but we're making that big cut right we're gonna use our loppers again so what will happen is you're actually gonna leave that foot on and it'll look just like that and the uh, the little that open area that we've we've created you can see what will happen after we tan it it'll kind of roll itself closed and uh, and you really won't even be able to tell um, there's no big deal by doing it this way and it's just so much easier to be able to get to uh, be able to work at it keep everything you don't there's no need to try to skin all that down in a tube because for one it's gonna make it more difficult to dry and uh, and then number two by the time you're done you won't really be able to tell the difference anyway right okay so now we've come we've skinned it down now we're gonna make a, a cut right here and just free that up that little patch that's left right there you no big deal you won't be able to tell the difference all right so now we're coming around to the tail here so now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to switch over to my gambrel and hook him in there and yep let's make sure you guys can see that all right so obviously you can see now because we left that tendon now we've got something to hook our gambrel into uh, and it makes it just very very nice and handy let me pull them up where you guys can see all right so we're coming around to the back of the the tail here now we want to be able to to work that tail out and uh, and we always want to split the tail especially on the uh, on the foxes and the coyotes because they're uh, they're so fuzzy and furry you know we want to make sure we get a, a good 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 bunch of air in there to dry you know okay so I've just got a regular sharpening steel here I'm gonna poke right behind the base I'm gonna pull down and that's gonna free up that section right there behind the tail now I find a lot of people have trouble pulling the tails uh, on canines especially just because they're so fuzzy 
Uh, a lot of times guys will end up just pulling them right off if you use a tail stripper. So here's, here's the method uh, to kind of get around that. You can definitely pull it if you want. Um, but if you take your knife right here and you can see we're just working it down a little ways, uh, we can take our knife, we can just put it right there into the tail and the hide and we're just going to go ahead and just slowly work that tail down and then we get down a good little ways here and we'll just kind of pull that hide and let it follow. Um, and you can just work that hide all the way down with your knife like that. Like I said, these critters here can be a little, little tricky sometimes simply just because uh, the fact that, um, you know, they just got such a fuzzy furry tail and they're thin skinned. Now, if you do feel confident in it, um, by all means, if you, if you get to a point, make sure you make an initial cut around the tail uh, and kind of get that, get that hide started rolling, right? And it, if you do feel confident, uh, you know, you can put your tail stripper in there and uh, just obviously a push-pull method here. You can see I'm pushing and I'm pulling at the same time. I'm rolling that tail out. And that's that's also another way to do it. But you gotta you gotta kind of work it slow, right? So splitting the tail. Let me make sure you guys are still in frame here. Okay, so we want to split this tail. Obviously, it looks nice, pretty right now, but it will look the same even after you split it, and then we can get it good dry. Um, a lot of times, I find people struggle with these tail strippers with the big furry tails. They'll just pull it right off. Here's another method. Take you a small fillet knife and uh, just stick down in that tube, right? And we're just gonna just work that tail. You can just open it up and just work that tail. And we can work it all the way down to the tip with our knife. And you can see that's opening up that tail. That's allowing, uh, allowing air to get in there as well as whenever we tan, that will allow uh, the tanning solution to penetrate the hide as well. So we're gonna go and we're gonna work that tail all the way down to the very end. Quite important here because you wanna have good, um, good airflow as well as, like I said, being able to, to get that tanning solution all the way down. This is very easy to do. You can see we split the tail all the way down to the very end. Now, like I said, if you're worried about it, look, it almost closes itself back up. You'll never be able to know once we've got it tanned. Okay, so now we've got our fox here. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and skin him just about like anything else. Fox skin about like a big rabbit. They pull super easy. So we're just gonna just work him down. Now, before we get too awful carried away, um, we're gonna do the same thing with these front feet as we did the back feet. Okay, so here's how I like to do this. This, this seems to work out quite well for me. What we're gonna do is we're going to come to the front foot and uh, of course right above the D-pad here is where we're gonna make our cut and then right at that joint in the shoulder, that's where we're gonna make our, that's where we're gonna stop our incision. And I'll show you here, we'll just run right up to right there, okay? So what this allows us to do is this kind of gives us an access point here where we can get in here, do the very same thing that we did with the back legs. We can just pull the skin around, but we haven't lost any integrity as far as the hide, right? Uh, you know, we haven't got a big gaping hole or anything and we can just fill that uh, with borax We can hold it open with different methods make sure we get good airflow But it's a lot better option than trying to leave this all in a tube form um, You know, you're a lot less likely to have issues with fur slipping that way So pretty straightforward here. Just gonna take our hands and just kind of knead right down 
okay so now we've exposed that joint right there um, same same thing here we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our loppers we're gonna cut that right there and now we've got something something good to to hold on to as well as now we can go ahead and pull this arm through the carcass and it'll allow us to skin it very easily so we're going to come right over to here and we're going to do the exact same thing right to the elbow joint Just like so. We're just gonna work it round and round and round and round. Take our loppers, make that cut. And now, like I said, you've got a very nice, um, you know, something easy to work with whenever we go ahead and skin the feet out as well as this will pull through the hide very nicely. So now we're to this point here, we're just gonna keep pulling the hide down. As I said before, with these fox, they, they pull super easy. Um, make sure you guys are still in frame here. I'll raise them up slightly. Okay, we've come to the arms here. Um, all we have to do is just kinda knead our hands right in between the arm and the carcass you'll be able to feel that kind of get your thumb in there and because we cut that foot and leg off we can just grab a hold and push and pull and see there you have it that, there's that cut off point the arm is still inside the carcass there so we can deal with that later another method if you really struggle with this is take your steel again and just poke it straight through and then give that a nice pull right that separates that hide and then you can just pull it down no big deal let me raise this up get it back into view for you guys now we're coming down to the head here and we're just gonna go ahead and come around the carcass here few cuts uh, always cutting directly into the meat never cutting down You'll want to watch the main veins on the canines, especially. Uh, they'll they'll get pre pretty bloody if you if you hit them. Um, you'll if you've got them hanging upside down for any length of time, you'll definitely be able to see them. They'll kind of pop. So we're just gonna work it real slow here. I'm gonna do my best to keep the keep the blood off this thing for YouTube purposes. So after we've come around the, the head here, you can see we've jumped up onto the skull. We're gonna e immediately start looking for the earbuds here. And they're gonna be right there, right at the top of the crease of the head. So we can go ahead, cut directly into the skull, make that cut, there's that ear. We can open them up, do whatever we want at a later date. Um, but we just want to get them off the carcass make that cut straight into the skull there's our ear holes you can see very nice tight clean closed up ear holes we're gonna go ahead keep pulling down a little bit make a few additional cuts now we know that our eyes are in line with our ears so we're just gonna keep working. Let me raise this up for you guys, keep her in the frame here. So we know our eyes are directly in line with the ears and you can kind of feel that eye socket in there. So we're just gonna take our knife as we're pulling and we're just gonna kind of feel for that eye socket. You can see it's right there. Just work right around the eye socket here you can see we've just just went right around it there's absolutely uh you know we didn't we just basically went around the eyelids essentially very small tight closed eyelids directly down straight down from the eyes 
is where the mouth opening starts. So we're just going to go ahead and make that cut there. This kind of gives us a nice point. A little bit of knife work here and there. We're going to come around to the other side here. You can kind of feel that indentation where the eye socket is. Cutting directly into the hide here, or directly into the, the carcass, not down, straight in. My knife's always straight in. There's the mouth opening here. Okay, straight in right there to the eye. You can see just perfect eye holes there. Me, the, yep, there you go. You guys are still in frame. Give it a nice little pull. Now with canines, they've definitely got a longer face than most critters, so we're just going to keep skinning right down that face. You can see I'm using my finger there to get a good pull point. I'm not worried about my knife hitting bone or anything. These are skinning knives. You can touch them up later. Don't worry about that. Just coming right down to the nose here. I get to a certain point where I ha need to catch up here with the, the bottom lip. Now I'm going to go ahead and just cut this off. There's no need to have a big floppy bottom lip. You'll never see that in a wall hanger. Um, so I'm going to leave you know roughly about that much there on the carcass. And then we're just going to keep working this hide down. Once you drop down off the skull, you will feel it changed the cartilage and we're going to work it down just a little bit more until we get into the nose and then we're going to get to a point right there where we just make that cut and there's a perfect perfect nose there okay so now we've got our fox he's all skinned out and he's got all four feet on him that we now need to skin out with the feet obviously uh you know, we, we've got the bones and the toes in there. So we're going to skin those out just as far as we possibly can. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn Mr. Fox here right side out. That way you guys can have a nice look at him here. All right, so there he is. Nice, beautiful fox. You can see i got all four feet on him. All right, let me reposition the camera and we'll skin out these feet. So I've got this fox here and I'm going to I'm going to be out of frame, but I want to stay super focused in on what's going to be working here because this is this is the important part, right? So this is where my nice little clamp system here. Um, this is where my zoom out. This is where my nice little clamp system here comes in handy. Uh, it works great for applications like this. So obviously you can see right where we cut that um, Right where we cut that bone off, you know, that gives us a nice place to hook. Now you can do the same thing by using a choker chain and a rope, um, but this is a nice stationary method here. So let me, let me just zoom right in there on this foot. Okay, so as far as my knife, I'm going to be using this, uh, this pelting knife again, just because, you know, this is pretty, pretty intricate work here. So there's three joints that we're going to have to go through on the toes, three joints, uh, and then we're going to have to deal with this dew claw here. First thing, so the dew claw here, you can see we're just gonna cut right at that joint. You can feel that that joint in that dew claw here. We're just gonna work right down. It's very nice if you can hang them like this because the weight of the pelt actually actually helps you. Okay, so there's there's the dew claw right there. You can see he's kind of separated himself. And we're just looking for that joint. If you get your knife down in there, uh, you can just feel feel those joints, and you can just kind of just pop your knife right through that joint. That's the very last joint right there on that dew claw, so we don't end up with a bunch of bone and cartilage left in there. Um, if you struggle really bad at trying to find these joints you can also just take a pair of side cutters uh you know and and just go go that method right it's a little little less uh 
a little less surgical, I would say, but it definitely works too. Okay, so right now we've come down and we've pulled this foot. Right here's the D-pad. The D-pad's got a lot of fat on it. So what I want to do is I want to cut in to the foot and I want to apply some pressure and just keep pulling down and my goal here is to try to remove as much as that gummy fat right now while it's hanging up and it's easily accessible to me okay Once we get down past the D-pad, you'll be able to start seeing the each individual four toes. Now we're going to have to work each individual toe down uh, on their own. The outside one are obviously the shortest, with the inside ones being the longest. Like I said, you're looking for three joints here. Um, and you can just keep working your knife around until you feel those those ball and socket joints you can feel it with your knife right there's one you can see i just i cut right through that ball and socket um, nothing really to it just working my knife around here like i said if you uh if you really struggle at this point here just take your knife or a pair of side cutters and do it. Um, but if you can just feel those joints, there's not much to it at all. Um, being able to feel those, feel those joints. So we're just gonna keep putting tension on it and keep pulling. You can see how much longer the center ones are than the, uh, than the outside ones. There's that joint right there, that ball and socket. Just come in and we'll trim that. There it opens up on the last one. And there we go. Now, what we've done by doing this is we've not left any bone. Let me see here. Let me zoom me out. Okay, so what we've done by doing this is we've not left any any bone or cartilage in the uh, in the foot. You can see right there, all we've left is just the pad and the claw. It's it's very uh, very loose in there. The whole foot is is right there. Uh, we you can see there's no bone because that's the joint that we took off to right below the claw. So there is our finished front foot. Okay, so I'm a little unsure how that autofocus was working on the other one there. So I changed cameras. Hopefully this will this will be as good or better. So here's our last foot here. As you can see here, we're just gonna take, same thing. This is the back foot obviously, so we don't have the dew claws to deal with. Um, I'm just gonna work it down same way. Just keep putting tension. There's our D-pad. We're gonna just remove as much of that fat as we can. You can see I've left that big glob right there, right on the carcass. Once we get down to the D-pad, I can kind of separate out the four toes. We're just going to work those toes right around, finding that, that ball and socket joint in there. Like I said, if you really, really struggle, you can get this cut down pretty close and then you can just you can cheap out and uh, and just go ahead and take like a pair of side cutters if, if you're really struggling but finding that ball and socket joint in there there it is come around to the other side here we're gonna do the same thing a little tension You can see that ball and socket just appear there. So we just want to get right in there at it. This is so difficult having a camera 
right in my face while I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to look over top of a camera. Okay, there's the two there. Obviously, we're looking for that third joint. Center toes are just a little bit bigger. There's that joint. Here comes the last one. There's that ball and socket. There it is. Okay, that's everything. Um, obviously, like I said, we're going to turn these right side out on this fox. Um, you know, bigger critters, you, you could flip it, but you've got such a fine window here, uh, you know, with the... Uh, with these small critters to turn them I just find it's easier just to go ahead and turn them right side out right now and then we can just pack up full of borax and there's his claws all nice and pretty all right flush them and board them okay so we're now moving to the flushing part now obviously um, you know we want to be able to, to showcase this critters ears right now, traditionally in the fur handling um, for the fur trade, we're, we want to uh, remove the ear cartilage. Basically take that fuzzy inside layer out. Uh, a lot of people don't like that whenever you, you tan it, right? So I'm going to show you a way here. We're going to split these ears and we're going to attempt to... Uh, to leave the, uh, the ear cartilage, that fuzzy part, we're going to flip it inside out and uh, and then, you know, if your tanning job's pretty right, you'll be able to, you'll leave that. Okay, so you can see all I'm doing right here while I've been talking is I'm just slowly working that earbud out of the of the skin you know because like I said we made our tiny tiny ear holes and we're just gonna just get it to where it, it sits natural like okay um, now what we want to do is we're gonna go ahead and take the ear and pull it through right so you can see we went all the way around it this was actually the the shot um, but now we've made our ear. This is what it looks like on the outside of the critter, basically. This is what I'm talking about. This fuzzy part, right? Normally, we would remove that ear cartilage. We would just rip it right out. But what we're going to try to do here is we want to save it. Because if you save it, then you can end up tanning your critters. And uh, you can end up having those nice perky ears, right? So I just kind of turned it inside out and what I want to do is I'm just going to take my knife and I'm going to start working and separating that skin because you can see here you know the, the inside cartilage is what forms the ear makes it makes it pronounced the outside skin is uh, is what you see so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to separate that. So I'm making a few cuts here and there with my knife. And uh, you know, if we don't if we don't separate this, what'll happen is that tannin has a very hard time penetrating and getting into the skin, and then it uh you know a lot of times that fur will slip on the back side of the ears. So I'm making all these nice small tiny little cuts. And the whole time I'm doing this, I'm cutting in towards the cartilage. Because it's obviously the tougher, um, it's the tougher material rather than the skin. So that's where I'm separating. It takes a little, takes a little getting used to. And I mean, it's, it's fairly delicate work here at this point. Uh, but this is, this is truly what splitting the ears means. Um, like I said, you can see I keep rolling this thing in and out, 
trying to use my hands just as much as possible. Some go easier than others. Uh, you know, if at all possible, I'd like to, you know, obviously you'd like to pull it more so than, uh, than cut. A lot less apt to make, uh, make mistakes that way. All right, so we're just to the very tip there. You can see I've made it, made it all the way up that ear. Uh, that's that's how it's looking. I've got just a little bit more here. We haven't made any holes in it, and we've got that ear completely separated all the way up to the tip. That way now we can roll that ear out. We can apply the tanning right here. Um, you know, it should take tanning really good. Let's do the other side here real quick. Um, we'll do the same thing for you guys. We'll just go ahead and we're just going to trim. You can see that ear bud. That's where it came off the carcass. But we're just basically trimming it back to where, where it meets skin on skin, basically, you know. Um, we don't want that that big dangly dangly earbud uh, but like I said it's easier to, to cut it off now than it is to try to chance it in the uh, in the skinning process right so just working that around pulling all that off okay there you can see there comes the ear he looks real nice Obviously, like I said, what we what we'll be able to accomplish here uh, by doing this is as that as that hide dries, we'll be able to end up with those those nice perky pronounced ears, uh, you know, for your wall hanger, and it just it just gives it a little bit more character. Uh, you know, if you would go ahead and split the ears traditionally, um, basically what'll happen is. is those little ear flaps will uh, they'll just kind of shrink up into uh, into little flabs of skin but by keeping it intact like this it uh, it just makes a really nice looking nice looking little product there so this side's going a little bit better uh, you can see I've worked away way way higher without all the knife work um, you know, and a lot of that could just be due to, uh, you know, maybe there was a scar on the other side from fighting or, you know, just many different things. So, there we go. Okay. So, there we can see. He looks real nice. All right. Now, we're going to flesh this dude. So, we're wanting to do, let me take the ear poke it inside just a little bit that way get those dudes out of the way that way after all our hard work we don't catch it <laughs> catch it on the knife right so a lot of this is, is just meat um, and this will kind of scrape off as you start the tanning process there's a pretty good run that goes from the eyes to the ears and then right around the uh, the cheeks the cheeks will cut off but this right here on the head this big gobby kind of fat stuff here which you see me working on right now if I take that off um, and I'm just gonna push that right down to the ears and then I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna cut that off Okay, there you can see that cleaned up super nice right there. Uh, we're just going to slowly kind of keep working down past and around the ears. Okay, now we get down below the ears and we're just going to go ahead and flush this dude out normal. Now for the fur industry, a lot of times they like to see the saddle left on foxes. It kind of shows that the thing wasn't overfleshed. Um, 
since we're going to be tanning this guy, we're going to take everything off. This is the important part where we wanted to make sure we got all the burrs out. So you can see I'm just working my fleshing knife down, just removing everything that I can. I have yet to touch the sharp side of my knife. This is all scraping. Um, here's that part of the cheek on the back side. We're just going to just work that off. The underside of these fox is super thin, so we want to be fairly delicate here with our, uh, with our knife. That little patch under the neck, we clean that off. This lip here, we're going to go ahead and we're, that'll get cut off um, for the most part right there in the boarding. Whenever we board him or Okay, so you can see now he got him all nice and clean all the way around the neck. Now we're just going to keep working him, working him down. I've got him on my very narrow board to show you guys, so I'm going to switch over here to my wider beam. Just gives me a little bit more room to work to show you guys here. So you can see here, I'm pulling the saddle completely off of this fox. We're taking it right down to skin. This would be the part that you would traditionally leave to kind of show that it was not over fleshed. Um, but like I said, we want to make sure that the tanning takes it. So we're going to remove it. Take all that fat off. I'm just going to head here as you can see as we're wrapping around I'm pulling the, the front arms back through the carcass that way the uh, the hide lays nice and flat on our on our beam and we don't uh, take an issue of, of popping a hole in it right so just working this thing down There's no reason to get in a hurry whenever you've done this. Uh, whenever you're doing this, I this is my first fox of the year, so um, I'm actually going, you know, a little bit slower just uh, just to make sure I don't have any any issues. If you do end up popping a hole in the hide uh, and it is a smaller hole. Don't be too terribly concerned about it. Uh, you got to remember, especially with like these foxes and the big critters, uh, especially in a wall hanging situation, you know, they're pretty furry animals. So, you know, any, uh, a hole, you know, under say like a quarter inch, even bigger, a lot of times, you'll never actually see that hole. Um, you will have to watch out for it whenever you go to break that, that hide. Uh, after the tanning process so you don't rip it but you know you can always sew it up um, don't get super freaked out if you accidentally uh, you know pop a little bit of a hole in it obviously the big holes you know if you if you've harvested this with a, a larger caliber rifle or a slug or something you may want to sew up um, just so it doesn't look you know looks kind of funny a bullet will do a lot more damage to a hide than than uh, one will think you know so we're just working this dude down just working them right down I'm trying to keep it in frame for you here We're in 
get all everything we can off of that um, all the way down to the feet sometimes those tendons are a little bit of a pain uh, but we can just kind of pull them off like so wrap around do the same thing the tail because we took our time and stripped it uh, it's pretty good depending on different animals you may have to address it a little bit but you can see here we've got it very nice and clean if you end up with a little bit of goobers right there on the side you can just take your knife and trim that off okay so there he is this dude is ready to get thrown on a board here so I'll get you set up for that okay so finally here we just need to board up our fox now because we're gonna because this is for tanning prop purposes um, we don't need to be real critical about this right uh, this is a fox board if you don't have a fox board don't even worry about it you can board them on another board say you have a fox you caught the odd fox and you just got coon boards that's fine uh, absolutely absolutely no no big deal whatsoever so traditionally canines are they're sold you know fur out but since we're tanning this there's no reason to even flip this guy so all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take let me see if I can get you guys okay yeah there we go okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take here and I'm gonna stick him on the board now you can see this bottom lip here that we were talking about uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that cut that right off um, that gum line don't need that don't cut the whiskers off but you can cut the the bottom uh, the bottom lip a little heavier because uh, like I said you won't be able to see that for the wall hanger purposes right so we may need to uh, just put a pin here and there uh, like I said we're not gonna get too critical with sizes or anything um, and we're gonna just leave this guy completely fur out so all I want to do here is take him and stand him up. I'm going to add a pin here at the bottom. Uh, you could do this on a wire stretcher too. So I'm going to add a pin at the bottom and then just a pin down, down both sides just to keep him from curling up. Just to keep him from curling up. With the ears here, we're going to make sure we're going to flip those back out. We're going to make sure. Now, I, I just like to keep the ears. I don't want to roll them completely out because depending on how they dry, sometimes in rehydration, they're a pain. So I'm just going to go ahead and just keep them normal. Um, and then we're just going to pack it full of borax in there and that'll allow them to dry very nicely. Same things with the front legs. Obviously you can see here with the front legs, let me bring you around a little bit. Obviously with the front legs here, you can see they're split. That is the tube that we created, right? That's what's going to, uh, you know, that right there is where you would need to have some extra borax. Uh, to be able to dry you can stick a clothes hanger in there if you want uh, a lot of guys will hang them like this um, you know depending on how you just don't want to have that uh, you know that skin on skin right so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some 20 mule team borax and I'm gonna go ahead and because I left my feet right way I'm just gonna go ahead and pack a bunch of borax down inside those those feet down inside the toes okay and we can change this borax out after a day or so so here's the foot obviously um, just take that this is 20 mule team borax uh, it's basically just a detergent is all it is but It'll, it'll just help that skin dry a lot better. So you can put paper towels in there. You can do a bunch of different things. Um, with your fattier critters, you know, sometimes you want to put some paper towels in there. Uh, if you're pretty diligent with this borax, it's, it's fine. The whole thing is just, 
let it get air and let it get dry. You'll actually see the next day the areas that the borax got put on uh, will have actually dried a little quicker, right? So we're going to come here and I always like to add just a little bit of borax right there under the side just to kind of give myself a little bit of leeway here and then these ears you can see here this is what I was talking about we'll just take these ears we'll turn them out and pack those full of borax those are gonna dry nicely like I said after day one or day two, you know, you can change that borax out. Um, yeah, we can even add a little bit on the face here, you know, whatever. It's no big deal. We just want to get him to dry, right? So there he is. He's nice and dry. We're going to leave this guy um, for four or five days or so at roughly 50 degrees. Um, basically, what you want to do if you're going to store him before you tanning. Now, obviously, this could go straight into tanning uh, as is. I like to save everything up and do it all at once, but if you're wanting to make sure and save them all up, this nose right here, once the nose is dry, um, then this critter is good to be taken off and uh, and and it, he's good to be stored until you tan, right? So. Okay, so obviously like I said, uh, I like to save up everything and tan it all at once. At this point, you could actually go straight into the tanning um, without boarding. Now, I, like I said, I still prefer uh, just to go ahead and have everything and do it all at once. Um, but yeah, totally up to you. If you're going to do that, you don't need to board it. You can just go straight into the tanning. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning how to tan, I have an entire series. I'll leave linked below on tanning with the deer hunters and hide tanners. It's the orange bottle stuff. It's about the most friendly for a beginner. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I've got a whole whole series on tanning using using that stuff. So anyway, this is Fox from start to finish. Uh, like I said, once you end up tanning him, he'll end up, um, you know, he'll end up with all four feet. It just kind of makes it a little act, cool little accent on the uh, on the wall hanger, right? So, yep, we've got that. Uh, got his ears. You, you'll be able to turn them ears out, and they'll perk out real nice. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've had lots of questions uh, for similar videos like this. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit that thumbs up, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. Uh, if you're new, this is the first video, consider subscribing. Uh, look back at a bunch of my other videos. I got some stuff probably interest you guys. Anyway, with that being said, y'all, I'm signing off. As always, I appreciate the view, and we'll see y'all next time.